Hi there, it's ThingsBoard, and today we want to share the main highlights of the new release. So let's get started. With new layout configurations, dashboards can now be tuned to fit different screen sizes perfectly. For this, we introduce breakpoints corresponding to specific display resolutions. They enable you to define layout settings and widgets based on the end user's screen size. To add a new breakpoint, you can copy the content from an already configured one. For this, choose the relevant breakpoint from the list, and then another one from which the content will be copied. These configurations ensure that each layout adapts seamlessly to any screen size, keeping your dashboard content scalable and perceivable. Starting from this release, SCADA dashboards are now available on ThingsBoard. They feature scalable symbols like valves, pumps, and motors created with SVG files that adjust to any screen size. Users can interact with them to control physical objects, such as turning pumps on or off or opening and closing valves. To facilitate these dashboards, a new SCADA layout has been introduced. It also supports breakpoints for responsive design, ensuring that the dashboard adapts perfectly to any screen size. In the SCADA layout, there are no margins between widgets, allowing pipes and other symbols to connect seamlessly. We've also introduced a new widget bundle with these and other symbols that you may use for your projects. Additionally, regular ThingsBoard widgets are also added to the SCADA dashboard with a transparent background and no shadow, blending smoothly into the overall design. For further customization, you can create your own SCADA symbols by following the guidelines in our documentation. The link to it is under this video. We have also upgraded our platform with new card widgets. The first one is the label card. You can use it to include custom static descriptions on your dashboards. Another widget is the label and value card. It presents the most recent value of device time series data or attributes. Additionally, we have added the unread notifications card, which conveniently shows all updates and alerts on one widget. This is particularly useful for users who view the dashboard in full screen mode. In the latest update, we've enhanced the appearance and navigation of the time window component. Additionally, we've expanded the visibility settings for the history tab. So now you can filter specific options like hiding the last, range, or relative sections separately. In this release, the web UI of the OAuth 2 system was significantly improved. Domains, mobile applications, and OAuth 2 clients are now treated as distinct entity types. This means that you can now configure them separately. Additionally, you can reuse previously created clients for new domains and mobile apps. For example, let's set up a new mobile application with our newly created client. Just like this, you can now configure a new domain and then reuse the same client. As you can see, this update significantly simplifies the process of setting up new configurations. In addition, we've also implemented a new feature to manage simultaneous editing on dashboards. From now on, if one user has already modified the dashboard, another will be notified about this when saving their changes. They can then overwrite the other user's updates with their own changes or discard their modifications. But don't worry, you can still download the latest dashboard version before discarding the changes, ensuring your work is saved without losing any updates. This feature improves collaboration, prevents accidental data loss, and gives you full control over how changes are managed. Another important topic is the custom menu redesign. The latest update makes adding and editing custom menu items easier with a web form instead of plain JSON. Now you can create custom menus for different scopes and assign them to specific customers or users list. For example, let's create a customer menu that will include only the dashboard section with two specific dashboards. To do this, hide all menu items and add a new dashboard section. Then select Add Subitem, enter its title like Dashboard A, and then link your dashboard to the subsection. 
Repeat these steps to add another dashboard sub-item. With these updates, you can also change the order of sections and their sub-items, as well as set up custom icons. Now you can go to your list of customers and check out how their menu looks. We're also excited to launch a new GitHub repository to streamline IoT device integration with ThingsBoard. The repository syncs with all web-connected ThingsBoard instances, pushing updates within 24 hours. You can now easily select devices by vendor and model, speeding up the integration process. While the infrastructure is live, we're still populating converters and welcome contributions, especially from hardware vendors. Don't hesitate to try out the new features and see you in the next release.